Morning, friends. I'd say we're good for a bit. It's gross outside. Super gross. We don't want it too hot in here. Let's spin the dials. Let's start our day off right. Let's go outside. Like I said, friends, it's it's gross out today. It's windy, raining. I've run this thing quite a bit over the last week. A little choke. Let's see what we got here. We got a winner here, folks. Compression's starting to come up. I think this thing's about ready to go in the wood. I'm happy. That's that's how a saw should start. That was a cold start. I did run this yesterday, but uh, that's a cold start. One pull. Uh, that's pretty good. That's real good. Let's go in the shop and hide out from this horrible weather. This makes me think of something, friends. You guys are really interested in this chassis. I gotta show you guys something. Okay, friends, that was kind of fun, eh? So far, over the last week, it's been about a week since I built this saw. It's getting better and better. First couple times I started it, it was a little lazy starting. Um, that's kind of how they are. Remember, the rings are not seated, and when the rings aren't seated, you get blow by. They tend to be smokier when you fire them up, a little lazier on the throttle till they warm up. All perfectly normal when you do a fresh build like this. So um, I wanna take a moment, friends, uh, a friend of this channel. And again, there's so many good people that help this channel out. I couldn't do it without you guys. And, and I truly mean that. Um, I'm honored and blessed that so many of you think enough of me that you wanna help me out. Uh, it's It feels good. This whole YouTube thing has just been an absolute blast and, and I'm enjoying it. Um, you know, it's it's just fun to make these videos for you guys and get the feedback and just have a positive, good environment that we can all swap secrets and moves and uh, I like that. I think positivity is something that we all need to have on the internet. Um, it just lifts everybody up and, and it just, it makes people feel good. So it's like, this is a positive channel and I will keep it that way. I promise you guys that. Um, a good friend of this channel, Mr. TK, he, uh, he sent me a couple of boxes of parts uh, for this chassis of saw. And buddy, thank you. I, I don't know what I did to receive such kindness, but you are a good fella. Um, he doesn't want the limelight or anything like that, friends. He just wants to help, and believe me, he's he's helping. So, TK, thank you, buddy. Seriously. So, friends, there's a bunch of parts in these boxes and a couple of half-together saws, and it, it, it sprung an idea. This chassis of saw is super common. I get a lot of emails about it. You guys are building these. I love the 200 series. So what I'm gonna do, friends, while I have all this stuff out, I'm gonna try and do a pretty complete series on the 200 series chassis, okay? I laid out a good selection, you guys can see here. Okay. A good selection of saws. I'm gonna try and steady this. Got this new camera and it's working out good. I'm gonna go over each saw on this chassis and then I'm going to go over in, in, a, in a series what fits with what, and I'll show you guys my experience, okay? So starting out, what I have here today, I have a 162 SE, 630 John Red, 
61 Proctica, 61 Rancher, 266 XP, 268 XP, 272 XP. I've also pulled out a bunch of cylinders and carbs. We'll get to that later on. Okay, friends, so that's what we have here. Now, I'm just going to highlight each saw, explain them to you. All of these saws are on basically the same chassis. There are some differences. I'm going to briefly outline that in this part of the series, and we're going to go deeper and deeper. These saws are super available. They can usually be bought reasonable, and um, they're just a good saw. I love them. They're light. The anti-vibe is not the best, but it's not the worst. They're just good saws. The aftermarket supports them. Um, and I look cool when I'm wearing my pool and hat. And swinging around a 266 in the woods. Uh, <laughs> that's one way to be a good looking fella. The only way to top that is to do this. I know. Eh? I know. That's the only way to make it better. Okay. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> I'm just having fun. Okay, friends. I'm going to start with the... And I'm going to move this saw over. If you guys can see... This is the earliest iteration of this chassis that I own, okay? Now, this is a 162 SE. This is a 1978, if I'm reading this plaque right on here, okay? The, this is the oldest version of this chassis. Now, these have some differences. If you find one of these and you want to build a saw off of this, that's cool and you can do it. But there are differences in this chassis that need to be pointed out. The first thing is the really early ones. The really early ones have a smaller oil cap. This one is leaking and it's probably cracked. These are really hard to find, friends. I've had a few people ask me if I have a spare. I don't even have a spare. Um, I'd have to look through my parts, but these typically are cracked because the the plastic is just, you know, deteriorated, okay? That is the main difference. They have a small oil cap and they are harder to find versus a newer saw has a bigger oil cap. You guys can see that right there, okay? So first things first, small oil cap. The handlebar is physically smaller around the circumference. They will often, and this one has one, have a metal recoil. It is the same as the more modern recoils, but they are metal. Also, metal handle assembly. These take different mounts. They are fine thread mounts than the newer plastic tank like this. Okay, so um, other than that, they are pretty much the same. Two-piece ignition. I'll show you guys how to spot that. Two-piece ignition. And, uh, you know, they, they are basically the same as a modern saw. They are quite a bit heavier and you can feel it, okay? Moving along, we have a John Sered 630 Super. This is an 88, 89 model, I believe. 89. This saw and that saw are the same saw, okay? They have the same top end, and I'm going to show you that in a later top end video. They have the same part numbers, and they are the same top end. So a 162 is a good runner. These are both 48 millimeter bore, 34 millimeter stroke. They are closed port, uh, closed transfers. They are good running, solid 60cc class saws. In fact, friends, I would say that these saws are my favorite 60cc saw. They, they cut above what they should. Now, this is an example of a Mixmaster saw. And that's why I wanted to do this video. You guys can build these and I'm going to help you. I'm going to tell you guys what I know so that if you're collecting parts for a project and you're on a budget, you guys can get what you need uh, easily and, and not, you know, not waste time buying parts that don't fit. This has a 266 top end and a 266 muffler. Okay. Um, the rest of it is 630. The intake, carburetor, air filter, all that is 630. Okay, so, and, and I'm going to do a top cover video. That is the hardest thing on these. You got to know which top cover fits which top end. They Some of them are higher, some of them are lower, some of them are super low like this one. 
that all affects what will fit what. Okay, friends, so these are your, your pro-grade 60cc saw on this chassis, okay? Um, I will show you guys later on the, the part numbers that are on the cylinders, and you can actually tell what you have without taking the saw apart. I'm going to move these down and get to the next two. One more thing, friends, before we do that. The one difference in the John Sered versus the Husqvarna, John Sered's... When you pull it on full choke, it puts it on fast idle, okay? I want you guys to listen. Listen, you'll hear there's an extra cam. You hear that? That's a cam that gets pulled over, okay? That puts it on fast idle. And then when you push the trigger, listen, okay? So that is the difference. The Husqvarna does not have fast idle on Huskies of this era is done in a separate step. Here, no cam. Okay? Nothing happens. So, you can put a Husqvarna, you can put a Husqvarna handle on a Johnsered, but if you put a Johnsered handle on a Husqvarna, you will not have fast idle unless you use the Johnsered choke rod and carburetor. Now, I'm going to show you guys that. This is a, uh, a junk saw. It runs good that Buckin sent me. He acquired it somewhere. This is a 630 Super with, I'm, I don't even know. We're going to tear into this saw maybe at the end of the series. I want to know what this saw is. It has good compression. It runs good. It has a 266 top cover, a 266 recoil, John Sered cases, and a Super 2 630 chain brake. Now, listen. You hear that? Listen. Okay, this has the John Sered control group, so it has fast idle when you push, when you pull the choke back, but you can also fast idle it that way, okay? So you can put a Husqvarna handle on a John Sered and have all that work and have two ways to fast idle it, that way or that way, okay? The inverse of that is the John Sered, you can't do that, okay? So just, just a little note before we keep going. This is fun. Let's keep doing this. Okay, now we get into your farm and ranch saw. These are super common. This is typically the saw you guys email me about. You have a 61 Rancher or a 61 Practica. Usually a Rancher because these are, these are old and, and getting harder to find. Okay. This is one I picked up locally a while ago. I actually bought this for a buddy and the same week he got literally the same saw in the same shape and uh, he said uh, I don't need that saw anymore so I've kept it here okay look look at the condition of this saw now the first giveaway that you have a 61 single screw air filter okay the 266s have a double screw okay so these saws are 48 millimeter bore, but they have an open transfer. Okay, that is the main difference. They have a smaller carb than the newer 266s. So if you're gonna build a 66 um, with this carb and you wanna port it, you're gonna make a little bit less power. It's probably not gonna be super noticeable for your average guy. Um, I've planned to do that. I have a 66 built with the old small carb. I'd like to put a bigger carb on it and we can test that theory. Does it make more power just by putting the bigger carb? Okay. Other than that though, this has the old style recoil. This is a plastic recoil. It is the same shape and design as the metal recoil. It has more slots on the front and you can tell the old saws, it has slots all the way around where the number badge is. Okay. And then this saw is like an 82 plastic handle so this saw is current as you go newer like this is the first of the new style saws with the plastic tank it is substantially lighter than the 162 okay i'm going to show you in the next or you know the third video in the series what you can do with one of these easily without doing too much uh damage to the top cover because remember friends these top covers are lower and they don't fit over certain top ends and I'll show you guys okay 
We should run this sometime. I, I've I've run this once. The chain or the clutch is just horrible on it. Okay, so there's your 61 Practica. Now we have a 61 Rancher. It is the same as the 61 Practica. The only difference is the top cover. Now, if you guys look, notice the shapes are different. This is the same as a 66 top cover, but it's black. It has the same profile. Other than that, this is the identical saw to the Practica. Okay, there's no difference in any way that I can detect other than the top cover is taller. So, if you were going to build a 266 underneath the hood of one of these, this would be a better way to start. Okay, so there's your two saws. They are exactly the same. This one's cooler, I think, because it's got the white top. Let's go to, let's get into your XPs. Again, these are all on the same chassis. That's what's cool about these friends. You can make a good farm and ranch saw or you can make an absolute fire burner. Okay, friends, now we are getting into extra power. And again, I want to show you guys one more time. Look, these two saws have the same profile, okay? It's the same top cover, it's just black on this one. And you can see it says 61 Husqvarna, and it's worn off, but... Again, TK, thanks, buddy. I didn't have one of these to compare. I've been looking for one. These are not common here. For whatever reason but uh you guys can see this saw and that saw are basically identical there really is no difference okay other than the top end i'm gonna move this out of the way now this has the incorrect side cover this has an old 61 chain break i picked some of these saws from my rack uh, I believe this one come from TK. I picked some of these saws to show you like this has a 61 recoil an XP top cover, but I'm looking at the serial number here friends and you can tell eight. So this is a 1988 It isn't look this has a 288 number plate on it. That's funny <laughs> But here's the thing, friends. I can tell what this is by the carburetor on it. 255A, S255A. So this has a big carb on it. So that would be consistent with the XP top cover. Whether this top cover goes with the saw, we won't know, right? Because again, a lot of these are pieced together. So this is the 266 XP. This is where you start getting into horsepower. This is a legendary saw. These things... I love these saws. For me, around here, the size of wood we have and all that, these saws are the cat's meow. They are lightweight. Um, they hold a decent amount of fuel and ported, especially ported, they run. This is my go-to saw. When I'm going to do work, I usually grab a 266. Um, a standard bore 266. Now, friends, these are 50 millimeter bore, 34 millimeter stroke. Close port. Um, they make good power. They'll run along with, uh, you know, a good 266 will cut with a good 044 still. In my experience, uh, I do own both saws, so um, they're close. They're real close for power. Um, they're just good saws, and they make power. And you can get parts for these friends. They're getting harder to find, but they are around. You find one that's blown up, you buy it cheap, and just rebuild it. And you'll have that reliable saw. Um, and if you guys are interested in that, go back in my channel. There's a 200 series playlist as well as I built that 266 for bucking. Um, I've built many 66s on this channel. And uh, you can go from mild to wild. I've done several different builds. Um, another note, this is where the chain brakes turn to plastic. Okay, that's the newer style chain brake. I'm going to cover chain brakes in a later video. Um, other than that, they are pretty much the same as the earlier saws. Okay, so there's your 266. Now moving on, these are probably my favorite iteration of this series. The 268, 50 millimeter bore, 34 millimeter stroke. It is basically the same saw as the 268, but it has the taller top cover. 
okay? It has the taller top cover of the 272. Here's a ratty 272. We built this on the channel, and I'm not happy with it, so. Okay, same top cover as this 272. It has the same large 272 air filter assembly. Same air filter as a 394, if I remember correctly. Okay, just a beautiful saw. Again, same recoil as the 266, but you notice they got rid of the cutouts here. There's more surface area to get the air in. Um, they're just a really, really nice saw. Now, and, I'll, and again, I'm alluding to a lot of stuff we're gonna do later on, but this saw has slightly bigger transfers in my experience than the 266. They did not come with a decomp. Remember, this is a 72 top end, so you know that fits. These have the largest muffler of the series, the same muffler that's on the 272. These tend to be really quiet out of the box. Um, I always open the mufflers up on these. They don't run super, super well with a stock muffler. This has the latest style clutch on it. This is the newest clutch on this chassis. You can tell it has the the single, I call them leaf springs. I don't know what you want to call them, but um, they have the leaf spring clutch. This clutch will idle at the fastest speed, which is good if you're porting a saw. Sometimes ported saws need to idle a little faster because of the fuel and air going through them. These are nice saws, slightly more power than a 266, but really it's not noticeable. I just like the upgrades, the better clutch, the better air filter. Um, these have a big carburetor on them. They're usually one, one size bigger. And by bigger, I just mean in the series. And I'm going to show you guys that. Um, these are a good saw. These are my favorite of the pick uh, of the, the series. This would be my pick. Now, moving along. 272. Okay. XP. This and this are where you get to the single piece ignition. You have a one piece or a two piece. Now that's the easiest way to see that friends, this screw in relation to this screw, if this screw is behind, which it is in this one, you guys can see that it's a single piece ignition. If it's in front like this, see the difference? It's a two piece ignition. So this 66 is a two piece. This 68 is a one piece. Now all 268s are one piece ignitions. All 272s are. Some 266s are one piece ignitions. That one I did for Bucken is a one piece ignition. Um, most of the ones I deal with here are two piece ignitions. So something interesting. Now the 272 is exactly like the 268. I think what Husqvarna did when the 044 came out, everybody wanted a 70 to 72 cc saw. That was the new cool thing to do. Well, Husqvarna only had this, and I have a feeling that sales were dropping. So, what did they do? They put a 52 millimeter top end on a 34 millimeter stroke, and voila, you have the legendary 272 XP. This is a single piece ignition. This has a different flywheel than the 268. Other than that, they're pretty much the same saw, other than the top end difference. Now, this is the second last clutch, and you can see this one's been hot. It, this is clutch has the three coil springs. These are great clutches. Again, they idle faster than the original clutch. And the original clutch, let's see if I have one here. I thought I did. I guess I don't, friends. No, we'll have to show you that in a later video. The earlier clutch is just a single coil spring. Okay? So, and these, in 1994, late 94, and this is a late 94 saw, came with the first decom. Okay? Other than that, these two saws are the same. Um, Power-wise, these are a little peakier, these are a little gruntier. I tend to prefer these, they're just an easier saw to live with. Okay friends, so that is the 200 series Husqvarna chassis. I wanted to outline the differences. Now again friends, these are all the same saw on the same chassis. There are some variations in the cases, the ignitions, the flywheels. 
There is multiple different flywheels for these saws, um, different coils. There is one, two, hold on, one, two, three, four, five. There's six different cylinders that go on them. I think there is four to six different carburetors. There is one, two, I think there's four or five different pistons, different piston designs. There is four different intakes. The Johnson at 625 and 670 have a intake boot. These all have intake blocks. There's two or three different intake blocks. That white rancher has a variation I've never seen. It's a different intake block than the other two. I find that interesting. Um, there is probably eight or 10 different mufflers. I think I have most of them. I'm gonna show you guys that in a later video. I really like building these saws. Most stuff is interchangeable, but there are some variations that I want you guys to be aware of. Um, because if you're on a budget and you're trying to build a good work saw, whether it's ported or not, these run good stock with a good open muffler and, and a sharp chain. These will put a lot of wood on the ground. So, <coughs> excuse me, friends. So I'm going to overlay all the differences that I know. And hopefully you guys can fill in some of my blanks because there's a lot of stuff that I don't know about a lot of these saws. Anyhow, friends, I hope you enjoyed this. This is part one of the 200 series Husqvarna video series. I don't even know what I'm gonna call it, but this is part one. Part two, part three, part four, however many parts we need, we'll cover top ends, carburetors, chain brakes, the difference in the cases. There's three or four different flywheels for these saws. Uh, ignition differences. It's very interesting. Most of them can be mixed and matched, but once you run into a, a problem, you go, well, what's going on here? I'm going to try and outline that in a video series. Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for being here and hanging out. And uh, I hope you guys got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Later.